Attention Texas, welcome to KISS Community Connections, 103.1 KISS FM. I'm Phyllis Jones, your host for this morning. And guess what? I'm not liking the weather yet, that, really. I don't like the rain. I want some snow. It got hot last week. I don't know why. And then, you know, I have to I have to say this about people who are not Northerners. You know, when it gets warm, you're not going to take off all your clothes and wear some shorts in again. You're supposed to take off one layer. We need to teach that lesson. A friend of mine here, her name is Nine. She know that we need to teach that lesson. Right, Nine? Right. Yes. <laughs> she didn't know she was going to get thrown into this one. But, you know, we need to teach that lesson of take off a layer instead of all your clothes and wear, you know, shorts and all this stuff. But anyway, it's okay. Uh, you know, first of all, everybody knows I'm about the community and all about the community. And if you're not about the community, you need to just get out of my way. And, and that's just it. Um, and I like to talk to people who are about the community because, you know, some people say it just to be saying it because they feel like saying it and they have no clue about the community. And there's two parts of a community. One, you can say you, you're part of your community, but you're not part of the streets. Well, then it makes you half. Because you, if you're part of the community, you also need to be part of the streets. Because those are two separate things. Because I could tell you something as a whole, a part of the community. But if you tell me an area, I can't. So that means I'm not, I'm not streetwise as far as our community. So today we're going to talk to three people who are here and uh, to talk about the community. And you know, one thing I always talk about, you know, I'm always beating up on the church. I do, I beat up on churches all the time. You know, because I'll say there was a time, you know, when we could go to the church and discuss anything we want to discuss. But a lot of churches have become business minded. And they forgot where they came from. And they don't want to go back there either because some of them just, just don't because they're about business. So I get excited when I find a pastor who is really about the community because, like I said, a lot of them have turned into businesses. And these two men are sitting here like, no, she didn't say that. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, yes, I did. <laughs> because it's me. It, it, it's me. It's me. And I'm not saying it because I'm just saying it. I'm saying it because I know. Because, you know, if I if I was, you know, going to be the other person, I'd actually name the churches, but I wouldn't do that. But anyway, yeah, yeah. it's very good to know that there are churches out in our community that not only know the community, but they know the street. So this morning, we're going to talk to, like I said, three people. Two of them are pastors, but one is a friend of mine, and she's here, and she doesn't know that she's going to be part of this. But since she's here, mm. she is. So, <laughs> and this one, uh, the, first, the pastor we're going to talk to now, I met him at East Ward because mm -hmm. every I volunteer a lot even though I work at another school I'm always volunteering at East Ward because I'm all about kids because I think if, um, if we don't save our kids today they're going to break in your house tomorrow also you need to know they're going to vote on you tomorrow mm -hmm. because if you don't teach them today they're going to vote wrong on you tomorrow and those nice things you have right now you won't have them because we didn't train them mm -hmm. so I'm talking to first of all Reverend Shackelford good morning how you doing good morning I'm fine you know what? He don't like my snow either. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm just putting that out there. He, he disagreed with my snow. <laughs> I was born and raised in Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, and it snowed every year. So right. I had my 18 years of snow. I'm good. So I wait, hold on. You on my show and you from Ohio? Yes. You know I'm from Michigan. You know Michigan on Ohio State. You know we had that thing going on. You know. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we've learned to <laughs> coexist. <laughs> 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 So now with my my blue and gold, you wear your red. Your red. That's right, crimson oh. red. That's see, right. I, see, I, I knew that. I knew that. See, he yeah. didn't know. I remember that. He didn't. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But was it, what you're the pastor of? What church? Church of the Deliverance in Killeen, Texas. Where is it at? Right across from uh, Killeen High School, thirty one twenty one Commerce Drive. And for the community, what do you do? Well, since we've been here since ninety seven, we every year have a wonderful book bag drive for the community. Mm -hmm. Every year, uh, twice a year, we give out food to the community. During the holiday seasons, uh, last year we gave out 50 turkeys. Yeah. I believe it was 50 turkey baskets, uh, complete with a meal to last year for a week. Uh, we volunteer all the time at the school system. That's where we met at, at East Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, we do the jumpers. We go to Clean High School. Uh, and then uh, yesterday I had the privilege to get in uh, contact with uh, Impact, that okay. Clean High School is doing the mentorship mm -hmm. program. Uh, I'm a mentor for five boys at a clean high school, and we constantly do things to just enhance our community. Great. What made you decide to become, I'm, I'm going to say it, not a church of just, I'm here, you should be here, but a church that says, I'm reaching out to my community? I believe that has to be in you as a person. Uh, I believe God has put that in me because of my mother was a giver. Uh, she worked in a nursing home. 
after school we was really we was raised in that nursing home helping other folks and since that's in me to do then I don't know nothing else to do but give and help folks if it's, if I can help them out if I'm doing something better than them or I have a little extra I'm going to share that uh, I think it's a it's in the person so what else in your church do you do and what do you have coming up uh, we do uh, I'm big on kid events I'm, okay. I'm, I'm big on kid events uh, then uh, also I have to share some time with the adults as well so uh, in February we have the masquerade ball that's coming up that we are promoting throughout the uh, Central Texas that we can get as much participation as we can uh, for the kids we do every fourth uh, the last Sunday in the month we do a youth service and we let the youth take over and do everything that that requires in the service minus preaching but they do everything else and dancing and, <laughs> and all the above can't let them preach just yet but I do have some preachers that's up and coming uh, we, 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 we do all kind of sorts of things. We have a, a football team, the Dallas Cowboys, uh, the AAU Pop Warner that practices at the football field on the side of the church. Uh, then we also partnership with the Chiefs that went to the championship and uh, one of the age groups won the championship. Uh, so we, we, we do, we're in the community and we're doing things for the youth. Uh, it's a big thing for me because I believe if we can catch them now, you said earlier, that they won't be breaking in your house later. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know one one of the one of the events you you had, and I was there because I'm always with David Woodbury from East Ward. Um, I had to carry the minions to to your church. Mm -hmm. The oddest thing is, can you see me driving down? A I was driving down, you know, Rancier with minions in the back of my vehicle. <laughs> oh, <wow. That's> new. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of an odd experience mm -hmm. <laughs> watching people break their neck trying to figure out what's going on there. <laughs> but along with um, in the community, what I want to ask you, uh, since you're here. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, let's go back. Explain the masquerade ball because you know, masquerade ball means something different to everyone you you talk to. Yes. When you say the word masquerade, mm -hmm. it has a different meaning to everybody. So, can you explain what it entails? Well, can I let Miss Nine go into detail with that? Of course you can. I, That's why. Of Come course on, you Nine. can. This is throw Nine under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is we love Nine Day. Oh, it's you didn't understand that? I guess so. I'm but, very loved. But don't but you, you just throw but hold me wait, out there? Wait, you know me. I do. So I should have stayed home. <laughs> but I'm loyal to my pastor. So Thank that you was so it. Much. So, so, but you know me. You know me. So I don't even know why you <laughs> thought you was gonna. You right about that? Because then I think get a chair. Yeah, you did say get a chair. See, that's where I should have known and got in my car, but I didn't. See, that's my fault. But you know me, I love talking about the events that are going on in the community. That's my favorite thing. Okay. So I'm in for that. All right. We are having a masquerade ball. It will be uh, February 17th. Uh, that is a Friday evening. It'll be at the Phantom Warrior Center. And my idea, I do understand what you mean when you mm -hmm. say that the masquerade ball has a different meaning Family, for yeah. lots of people right. because right. the first time that I was ever introduced to a masquerade ball, it was the masquerade Zulu ball in Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. And the first time, you know, being from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, right. go Steelers. <laughs> I made sure <laughs> that I, I did not get yeah, slid. Don't like Steelers. You don't want to talk about the Steelers. <laughs> <It's like things. laughs> but when I went to the Zulu uh, masquerade ball, it was the most exciting thing that I had ever seen because mm -hmm. I really wasn't didn't know anything about masquerade balls, and to see it on that level, it, it was outstanding. Right. And so our masquerade ball is kind of uh, in the middle of all the things that you you've seen. You've seen the gothic side mm -hmm. of it with the um, you know mask of. Uh, I don't want to say horror, but the mask of the goth community. Right. And then you've seen the, the clown like mm -hmm. masquerade balls right. where you're dressed, you know, in jeans or costumes with their mask. But our masquerade ball is going to be centered around a formal atmosphere where every girl loves to get in a beautiful gown and get their hair all done up and their nails all done up and pull out their grandmother's jewels that they very seldomly get a chance to wear and to show out. And the guys get to get in their suits and bow ties and tuxedos, whatever their flavor is. Mm -hmm. And we don't really get a chance to get out, to get all dressed up and all right. good sheets. 
in order, you know, in a public event, but we will on February 17th. Okay. At the Fan and Warrior Center, you know, it's an elegant atmosphere to start. And, you know, we're going to add a little bit more flavor to it. Okay. So right. I'm wanting everybody to come out and okay. enjoy the so festivities. You, you know what my attire is going to be, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you do. Okay. All right. Yes. I'm, I'm going to try to talk you into a gown this year. You, you in? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Cause the the my my, my what what my attire gonna be can be I can do a gown with that you, you can but she knows my attire is always African attire African attire yeah because I don't do anything else I refuse to do anything else they have gowns yes in yes they we do, do. Oh. Yeah, yes yes they, they, oh. so I can create one of those I can make one of those I can do that I can make one of them but she know I she 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 I, yeah I, yeah I, yeah and she always looks amazing <laughs> so we gonna gown it up yeah that's what we gonna do okay now I have a question now and this is to your name is? Mr. Benet. Minister Benet. Scoot on up. Okay. Benet? Benet, yeah. Okay, I have yeah. an issue with the with the with the ties <clears throat> and the suits. Who's gonna teach those who don't know how to tie a tie to tie it? Because our problem in our area is that you two men will sit here and say, Oh yeah, get a suit, tie, and let's go. Right. Okay, now you got some who don't own a suit, wouldn't know how to buy a suit if they went, and can't tie a tie, but they wanna go. So sometimes we forget the beginning and we go straight to the end. That's so, good. <laughs> so what are we going to do in the beginning? Because you have a lot of people who will go, mm -hmm. will go, and they really want to go. But then you say suit and tie. Oops, I don't want one. Can't tie a tie. Dad can't tie a tie because he no one taught him. Mm -hmm. So when do we start in the where are we going to start in the beginning of that? Because I love the idea, right. but I always think of the that, that other part. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I said my, my name is Minister Benet. I work with uh, Pastor Shaka for close with uh, Church of Deliverance. And uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, well, I, I learned how to tie a tie from my dad. My dad was a musician, and, and uh, I think his attire was, uh, they wore suits and ties, right? And I saw him every day just kind of tying. So so um, anyone, all right, that come that come early, I'll be there, right? If you need to learn how to tie a tie, I'll tie it for you. It's too easy. What about like that. a week prior to tie a tie? Teach you tie tie, young men. Every Monday, <laughs> every, every, every yeah. Monday at six thirty at the church, we have Monday Night Raw. Okay, and that's called Monday Night Raw because we want men and boys to come, and we talk about raw issues for men. And at that time, anything that they want to talk about, any area, uh, in, in, in any aspect that they want to go into, deep or on the surface, we'll discuss it. If they want to learn how to tie tie come this coming monday and we got from monday now till the 17th of february to it's learn how to up. tie the tie and or i go soup shopping with you we can go to soup city we can go down to um Where Melton up. temple yeah. and go to men's warehouse right. we can go to dealers at the mall anywhere they want to go jc penny wherever their money is i can take them and show them how to piece it together and look real sharp to include shoes and accessories because we know people like head to toe accessories we'll make it work out for them. But Monday Night Raw is every Monday at 6.30 mm -hmm. when we talk about men issues because men need to step up and be um, more rounded and grounded right. uh, in men things and in our community. And, and I say that because, like I said before, we always talk about the ending. I want you to come to this. Right, right. But we forget that, you know, I was, um, I work with a group of people um, from Nation of Islam and mm -hmm. then we formed a, we have the peacekeepers. Okay. And we're going to go out and leaflet the city because we have mm -hmm. Squash the Beef Hotline. Okay. And we're working with all groups, all mm -hmm. age groups. Mm -hmm. But the younger guys we're working with, one of them wears a suit because that's his job. Right. The other one, he was look. he looked like, uh, I don't, I don't own a suit. Mm -hmm. Never wore a suit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I asked him, so would you go buy one? He said, who going to go with me? Mm -hmm. His friend, who right, going to go right, with me? Right. I said, can you tie a tie? Nope. Mm -hmm. Why not? Nobody ever taught me how mm -hmm. to tie a tie. He mm -hmm. needs a, he's in his late 20s. Mm -hmm. So he's not, not his thing is, I don't know how to buy one, so I'm not buying one. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to even go to where you wear one at because those other two things don't fall into place yet. Right. So sometimes right. when we wonder where we are mm -hmm. and why our people aren't there, it's mm -hmm. because we forgot to do the beginning. Mm -hmm. We forgot the teachable moment of... You know, just saying, hey, listen, you know what, today we're going to talk about how to tie a tie. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, or right. today we're going to show off, we're going to show you what a suit actually looks like when it's fitted. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to show you one that, you know, he need to take it back to the mm -hmm. tailor and get mm -hmm. it fixed. Mm -hmm. right. 
Mm-hmm. But if we don't teach those things, men, I'm, I'm, I'm calling them men, if you don't right. teach those things, you cannot expect it in the end. Correct. You know, and if you want to reach the community, to me, you're doing a great job, fantastic mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. But we still need to, we forget the teachable moments sometimes. And it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I agree with you 100%. And I think somewhere it got lost. Yes. Uh, it's twofold, I believe, or it could be deeper than that. But for me, uh, society says you need a certain amount of money to live. And so what we have done is we have left our families to go make the money that society says that we need mm-hmm. because everything goes up. When prices go up, not every time our money, our salary goes up. Right. So it, it squeezes the family a little bit more. And so that makes me, the man and the woman now, get out in the community and to make more money. But now we leave and we lose our families because we lose our children and we leave them to be raised by someone else. Mm-hmm. And so some things get lost in there. And I believe now the generation that's coming is now getting back to, you know what? As I go up and be successful, I gotta take my family with me. So we gotta get back to teaching. Uh, uh, Somewhere, older people like myself, we have forgotten about uh, teaching. Uh, When I was growing up and uh, we used to go visit Alabama every summer and we used to learn about country things. But one thing I enjoyed was we would sit out on the porch and we would, they would shuck peas and them older folks would teach us how to live. <laughs> they would teach Amazing. us how to live. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so in that, they're yeah. teaching us how to live and right. they're talking about things that we need to learn. Correct. We've gotten away from that. Yes. And we got to get back to uh, uh, teaching our children just, just tying the tie, right. how to sit at the table, mm-hmm. what fork to use. You know, we don't do them things and we look for other folks to teach our children and we got to get back to the home and teaching our own kids. And, you know, also, um, when I was growing up, mm-hmm. everything you needed to learn was taught at church. Yes. Because church was open for the people mm-hmm. of the community mm-hmm. seven days a week. Mm-hmm. Now you find some churches have business mm-hmm. hours. Mm-hmm. Now he, now he ran away. <laughs> you, 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 you find churches with business hours. You find churches that, you know, uh, no, you're not a member of my church, so you can't have nothing at my church. Mm-hmm. So that part of our world was taken away from us. Right. And also when I grew up, and I'm sure when you we all grew up, mm-hmm. your your preacher had a job. Mm-hmm. He worked amongst people every day, and mm-hmm. at work he was called Preacher Man. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was his name. <laughs> he had no name. Mm-hmm. That's, right. <laughs> That's who he was. Well, our community now is not at a loss, but mm-hmm. our community is suffering mm-hmm. because the one thing that we used to be able to rely on has changed. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll say um, on Facebook, mm-hmm. um, we had a we were having a good discussion, a lot of us on Facebook. And this one lady, she said, she said, we just need to get up and go back to the church. I stopped her. I, after that, I'm like, okay, I was just reading. I wasn't going to say nothing. But when she said, I'm like, wait a minute, excuse me. I said, you talking about a time when churches were about the people. Mm-hmm. Not most churches are about the business. They're mm-hmm. not about the people. Mm-hmm. I said, you got churches with business hours. They close at 4 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I said, so if I need to go by there at 6, forget you. <laughs> you ain't coming in. Mm-hmm. I said, you, you have so many other things that churches are about now so we can no longer knock on their door and say, hey, listen, uh, we're going to have have an assembly we want to meet here uh, here and want to discuss it i said first of all if he doesn't believe in what you're doing he ain't gonna let you do it mm-hmm. right. i say and also you have churches that are in the community but that church the people of that church don't live in that community mm-hmm. i said so we had a disadvantage now so i was telling her i said what you talking about that happened in the 60s and beforehand even the part of the 70s in 2000 it was 16 and it doesn't work mm-hmm. that didn't you know so she answered me back after about an hour but what she said is she realized that i was right you know and she said she was just talking of the past i said mm-hmm. i understand what you were talking about mm-hmm. but it no longer exists so i said now we have a disconnect mm-hmm. with our churches and i hear a lot of young people with a negative message of a church mm-hmm. and i hear people pounce on them but then again i said no i understand what you're saying they said well i understand what you're saying i really mm-hmm. understand it i said because you have to listen i said if you listen to them of today and what they have we can't say like i can no longer i can't say i was 25 so i know what you're talking about because i don't right because when i was 25 there was all those things they have not they didn't have so right. i right. can't say right. oh yeah i remember then mm-hmm. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. I remember then. right but right now our churches have changed mm-hmm. so we can't knock on that door anymore mm-hmm. so what would you what would it take for that to change because that needs to change too because as you know church used to be a newspaper 
Mm-hmm. You know, if if yes. if, Mr. Mm-hmm. if if That's nine's right. if nine's barbecue was 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 was, was gonna shut down, mm-hmm. you told everybody, well, you know, well, didn't support. They, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and you know, when right. you left church for the whole week, month, whatever. You was looking, right. you was looking exactly. at Nan's face at Nan's barbecue. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it was your direction. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was the word of the gospel, yes. Mm-hmm. Right. But it was also your spiritual food and your mental food mm-hmm. and your food for the rest of the week, to, you know, your community food. It was mm-hmm. all there. Well, we lost it. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm listening to you, you still have it. You brought mm-hmm. it back in. Mm-hmm. But what would it take for us to fix that? Because it's a huge issue. And it goes deeper than just, oh, yeah, let's go do it. Yeah. I want, I want to say, uh, piggyback on that. Um, I think when I met Pastor Shackle for one of the things uh, I learned about, he was, he was doing things in the community. And I think being in the community is when you actually, you know, you kind of meet the people. Like me and myself, I work with uh, Temple High School. I work, with, um, I work with communities and schools. And I work with 90 young men. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it is, once I, once, I think he always, he always teaches us to engage young people. Mm-hmm. And, and when he put together Monday Night Raw, that was to, to engage the, the, young, the young men to bridge that gap, teach, you know, whatever area that we need to be taught. But a lot of the kids, they're actually in the community, they're actually in the schools. Like, in, like mm-hmm. Galeen right now is doing the, doing the mentorship program. And I think being in the community, I think that's what actually bridged the gap. Now, say, for example, if I'm out there and, and I'm living, living a, a, a structured standard of, of life, you know, and that young man see me, he say, okay, I'm, I'm a light then he'll come talk to me or I can ask him a question. I build a rapport with him. He'll tell me some of the things that's going on with him, not just in school, but even off the campus. So once I get to know him and then he's like, well, what, you know, he'll ask me, well, may ask me, where do you go to church? I'll let him know. But mm-hmm. I think it's just being in the community and being linked up with our pastor and then linked up with them, that give me an idea. You know, some sir, we need to kind of do something in this area to kind of reach them. And I think that's what, that's one of the things I think that Church of Deliverance does they're in the community and we're doing things to reach the young people in as many avenues as possible. So I think that's how it was actually bridge. Because right now I, I'm working with a lot of young people, a lot of ninth graders, 10th graders, and, and seniors as well. And they all have like, uh, you know, yeah, academic issues, but they have, you know, st- right. family structure mm-hmm, issues mm-hmm. where there's no fathers in the home. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's a lot of uh, lack of lack of fun, lack of resources, things like that. So I think, um, I think the more we into the community and, and, and uh, we can kind of see what's going on, we come back and then he sets up a program. So, okay, we can do this. And he'll tweak it and he said, okay, let's put this together to reach them. And that's, what, that's why we're here today, to, to put out a program, let them know that we're, we're doing Monday Night Raw. That's for the young men. You can come there and, and this is an open forum. You have uh, several, many ages there. And we have some boys that are like six, seven years old. Right. They sit in there, their, their father's there. And, and we just talk about this real stuff. So when you become a man, you know how to function in the community. So what are you doing to let the entire community know? Advertising like yeah. we're doing now. Then we got uh, uh, brochures and and talking to folks just right now. Just word of mouth is the biggest yeah. thing in the flyers. Uh, but can I go back uh, and revisit the co- topic? Uh, I really believe that it's twofold. Yes, the church has changed, and then yes, so have the people. Mm-hmm. I can't afford to leave my church open. Uh, seven days a week because right. somebody gonna come in and steal all the stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the same, the, <laughs> and the, the same people I'm trying to reach will come and steal from the church. Yes. Times have changed and 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 people have been squeezed uh, so tough now with their resources that the respect for the church have decreased, have declined over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we can't leave the doors open all the time. Um, people say that the church have become a business. Well, even though I spend all my time out in the community, no one puts no resources back into the church. Right. So without the resources coming in from the people, I can't turn the lights on. I can't get the, the, the carpet cleaned. The people's not cleaning the church. When I came up, we all take the, played a part in cleaning yes. the church right. before you leave. Mm-hmm. We don't do that no more. We right. come, we enjoy the service. Mm-hmm. We sit on the sit in the pews. We chew gum and we take the gum out and stick it on the bottom of the chair of the church. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, now we lose the chair, or we have to do something to get that gum off the chair. Mm-hmm. So the respect and the honor of the church have 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 decreased. And, and in that, now we have to do something to keep the church alive, to try to hold on to the church. And what we do is 
You can't go out and give to everybody that comes in the church because right. you're not putting nothing in the church. Right. If you go to the bank, you can't open a bank account on zero. You got to put some money. They say, what you going to deposit? Mm -hmm. You got to have some type of mm -hmm. deposit. We don't want to make a deposit in the church anymore, but we always want to withdraw. So we got to get back to where the church have opportunity to pour into your life. And then you got to bring something to the church as well. Right now, the church is not. We The society says church is a welfare office. We're not. Mm -mm. We can't be that. And we can't fix every need for everybody if people that need don't come and put in. Some people we reach out to. But if everybody come through the door and say, give me, give me, give me, now what's there for the church? Because we the uh, electric place, uh, we do uh, extreme energy. They don't care if <laughs> no one comes to the church. We, right. They want their yeah. money. Right. Yeah. The telephone folks, they want their money, you know. And we got to be able to provide the income that's required to pay them bills. And if the water place, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, city clean, mm -hmm. they want their... Mm -hmm. And if you don't pay that bill, you don't have no water. Okay, now yeah. where do we get that money from mm -hmm. if no one comes in and put into the church? See, everybody wants to take out. Right. But with, with the, the people, if it's 100 people go to church... 10% of it is putting back into the church. Mm -hmm. What's that other 90% doing? But you know, if people never hear you say that, that teachable moment that you just said, yes. then they don't know. Yeah. Correct. See, our, the, our problem, I think most of our problem is the teachable moments. Okay. I love that. that we let go by. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. start doing something we never should do. Mm -hmm. Assume. Assume. Because if yes, I break that word down, right, we know right, it's... Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he got what I was going. He got what I was yeah. going. <laughs> but we, we, we forget those teachable moments. Correct. But well, we're going to take a break and come right back. <laughs> 